Foil surfing, right? Yeah. This is your invention. When you basically put a giant foil rudder on a very small board. Yeah. With close. snowboard boots. Yeah. And fly on it. And how long? You're a little bit over above three the Over three really? minutes. Over three minutes one ride, yeah. yeah. I love in uh, The Longest Summer when those guys, I forget where they are, but the guys, the waves, in the original uh, Endless Summer, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the original Endless Summer, that was in like the 60s with like the really cool 60s voiceover, like, and then the guys yeah. in the gray suits came. That's what Australians call sharks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they had, I think they were like in India, someplace so bizarre and remote that the waves were small, but they were so long that they ran out of film and then would put another reel on their camera. Started and then, up. And then the guy would still be on that same Hang little Well, there's wave. a couple places. I mean, there's like, uh, in Peru, there's a famous place called Chicama, which, uh, which has, you know, you can four or five minute ride. Where you can ride away for four or five minutes, it just not a very big wave that just kind of wraps down a point. And How goes. does that? What's the conversion rate for a Peruvian wave to an American wave? Is that like a one minute American wave? Is it like a currency rate? No, it's 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 even. Well, that, but foiling for like three minutes is probably like surfing for six minutes. Have you foiled? Well, because the speed was. That's going. what I mean. Yeah. Have you foiled, Gabby? I've only done the air chair. What the hell? What are you guys doing? It's not well, like no. swinger talk now. No, that- <laughs> I've only been in the air chair. But that was with Laird and a bunch of his it's friends. It's a hydrofoil seat that you so ride behind a, a water ski boat. And his face was in my butt in my gold bikini. He said, don't worry, I'm not looking. I'm like, well, of course you're not. That's We're in the not looking club. Because we're on the air chair. We're in the air chair. No one can see anything. When you sit, Laird's on the standing on the foil and I was sitting. And not it's still, after good. all these years, still tandem. Huh? See that? Only tandem, babe. You're sitting and he's standing. That's right. That's how we keep it going. Um, well, sometimes I'm sitting in your stand. Sometimes. Your, you have, you wrote, a, your book that was already out was, well, the one that's coming out is My Foot's Too Big for the Glass Slipper. Yeah, that comes out in April. Can people pre-order it? Or is it too early right now? It's too early. The book is almost, it's pretty much done. It's in its edits right now. And we'd shoot the cover in about two weeks. What's, is it mostly like, uh, this has been my journey style book? Um, it's How more, it it's, the- it, it's the conversation, it's my observation and kind of some of my well, experiences. What's, the, what's below the title? My foot's too um, big the modern day guide, how to survive the happily ever after. And it, it just kind of talks about all things like, Don't if, say that again, but like, my nice foot's and too, easy. That's my a good foot's, title. Thank you. I, I came up with that. Thank I you. know, but you went over it like you were like, eh, it's, it's stupid. Well, it, no, no, it's, it's cause it, what we, were gonna call, you? we were going to, we were going to, I don't think I'm going to try to sell this book too hard. I think this book uh, will be a lot of fun. Um, it talks you about sex be, and I, marriage. If I had your guys' and marriage, I wouldn't really try to sell a book either. Fitness and nutrition and raising kids. And my foot is too my big. Fits, my foot's too big for the glass slipper. The modern day guide, how to survive the happily ever after. We were going to call it Boom. how not to survive, how not to impale yourself on the white picket fence. But that came do. across a little bit harsh. So keep we, that under your hat because I well, might use it at a later date. Well, we have it. At, one of the chapters is how not to impale yourself on the white oh, pick events. You can it. borrow that. But your first book was Big Girl in the Middle. Big, yeah, so we keep the theme of big, you know, big, everything big. But that doesn't – you're tall. But I, I, but when even being around you, like I said in the living room earlier, yeah. I said – and I, I wasn't just being a smart ass. No. I said you just seem taller to me. Maybe I no. wore lifts on Gary O'Merritt or something. But you just, and Laird said I had a dent in my living room floor. <laughs> I was just standing in the dent. But I never, what I was getting at was, when I read like titles, like Big Girl in the Middle, yeah. I picture like the fat chick from Precious. <laughs> like just some well, big fat slob. Was, like you, I, that, would, I don't consider you like a big girl. No. Well, that was more tall. of a, of a, of a, you know, like if I was playing volleyball and they, if you said, oh, well, who, where's Gabby? Oh, she's the big girl in the middle. And I was a middle blocker. And so it was sort of, a play on the, that kind of thing. Well, sure. And also my size w- was, you know, instrumental in, in forming a lot of things in my life. And so the idea of my foot's too big for the glass slipper had more to do with that really the idea of the fairy tale that we're sold. It, it's like nobody fits. It doesn't fit. Like who's See, that's like interesting to hear from you because to me and to the listeners, you guys are living, you guys are the fairy tale. Like you live in Malibu, you live in Kauai, you surf all day. Yeah. You got three beautiful girls. Yes. And no, we live a fairy tale life, but it's defined. We have we have had the good fortune of defining it for ourselves instead of me going, uh, you know, like the like the first chapter of the book's like, okay, so now you have the guy in the big white horse. Now what? Yeah. Like it's really the, clean up after the, horse. the now what? Right. But in, instead of people thinking like women women coming and thinking <laughs> the guy's going to come and save her and make her happy. 
and all of that, that's like a misnomer. I think it's un- it's an unfair expectation. Save yourself. The guy you're with is good enough. Save- no one's coming well, off listen, a billboard. We well, that's talk true. About that really, I, I go, listen, I'm going to go and figure out how to make myself happy. Oh, yeah. You go figure out how to make yourself happy. We'll come back to the same yeah. house. And together, each of us being happy, after making ourselves happy, no. we can be happy together. But to look at the other person thinking they're going to bring you happiness. You yeah. can't make anybody you happy. You cannot. And that's, no. and, that's, happy. and that's really the conversation yeah. in, in that particular book. So it's really about rejiggering you know, the, what, we, what we're what we putting out there and what we think we're going to get back. And also I talk about women don't, don't defend themselves through the process of being a wife and a caregiver and a parent. And so then they get spit out at 50 and they're pissed. Because the kids are like, thanks, love you, I'm going on with my life. And the husband's like, kind of didn't skip a beat. This is Deion Sanders Jr., mom. I'll see you later. No, but I'm just saying. They don't, you know, they don't. And so I, I, I explained too, I think that women also have to go, I need this. I want that. I'm going to take care of myself all simultaneously while doing that. Because they'll say, oh, I got left. He left me for a younger woman. It's like, well, no, maybe he left you because she's still interested and she still experiments. And she smiles and she says, I like you. Versus you're mad and you're older because the process hammered you down. So, you know. And you didn't say what you wanted along the way so you could still be happy. And give the guy a chance also to go. I've always said that life can be really boring and the trick is to find someone you're really happy being bored with. Oh. Lay in bed, watch Law & Order, go to bed, wake. It is a routine. We're going through that right now. You're bored with each other? No. we're both boring? We're both a little bit stagnant, I think. And we both feel restless. Put her in the foil chair, bro. (laughs) I get. I still have that again bikini. And again. I better bring that out. No, but just what? How you can sort of go through that? Well, you know where my favorite <laughs> bikini is, right? The one on the floor. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's always like, Burns and here. That was good. He's always like, <laughs> you know, that, Mary I'll be like, do you like this dress? Do you like that? He's like, you know, what my favorite one is right. I'm like, yes, I know the one on the floor. <laughs> the, in defense of Gabby here, I gotta say, being being married to Laird is like being married to a 15 year old boy. <laughs> it's fantastic. I know it's fantastic, but he is like, like, I mean, no, because he's, but he's also so manly that the 15 year old is, is a great energy. It's not like he's like that all the time. He's the perfect man for you. He, he, he you is. You are, you do have the, a crazy, yeah. like ridiculous, strong body. Like you're a weird, strong guy. Like I think in the NFL, like they all wish they could HGH themselves to your, <laughs> he's very physique. strong and he's completely he all natural. Paddleboarding. When I got done with my surf lesson, I was like, what a workout. I was up there for a half hour in Malibu Creek, and I thought I just ran a triathlon like it was a big shot. No, but that's what I think is because I think Laird does something that seems is is dangerous, and it's very it's perceived as incredibly masculine. It kind of liberates him to be sort of like a a really nice man. What? How? If you, all right, let me start off. And he likes women. He had a really good mom, and so he he likes he doesn't he likes women. Well, strong and, and women. You know, like uh, Gabby was reading up about couples and successful relationships and and they said that the only single factor that all the successful relationships had was that the man respected the woman really yeah in 10,000 in 10,000 couples could be the woman was dominant the male was dominant whichever the situation was she was the breadwinner he was the breadwinner it was all different scenarios but they said the only single thing they had in common was ultimately that the man respected the woman well, good. I respect my wife. See, it'd be weird it's to be married to somebody you don't respect. But look, it happens. And if women, oh, of course, believe me, realize you know. we're in the minority, or, or eventually in the position becomes where that the man doesn't, that he doesn't have respect for the woman because maybe she's not allowed to, or she doesn't get herself in a position to be respected. Like maybe he's not appreciating all the all that the things back it takes. What Gabby said of saying, "I need this." Mm-hmm. I need well, that's this. right. Or if you find yourself or, a woman or I, I'm going to do this, yeah. <laughs> or manipulating a man that will never get his respect. Like, I'm to happy just when it. I go out to like Panda Express with my girlfriends. I'm and like, I don't want you going out. Well, too bad. <laughs> this is what makes me happy. Yeah, I'm putting my foot down. Yeah. I need to claim this. Yeah, for myself. exactly. Yeah, I always tell like guys that are like questioning whether or not to get married. I'm like, bro, no one's coming off the billboard to walk into your life. There's no chick in a magazine that's going, no. oh, my God, I didn't even see you sitting there, Andrew. <laughs> of co- I didn't know you were in this world. Like, of course, I need, like, this is the gal that's bugging you to marry her for a reason. And if you're unsure about it, don't do it. Yeah. If you want to, you know, I, I think it's in When Harry Met Sally. If you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start right away. Yeah. I, I have a friend that I, we were just discussing that where he's like, well, you know, we're talking about maybe taking it to the next level. I go, you wouldn't be able to help yourself. You yeah. wouldn't be discussing, yeah. well, do you it think we should get contained. more serious? 
you can't help yourself. It's, we say it's the, it's the rocket, you know, to get you up into space, you know, the initial blast. If you don't have that, how yeah. are you going to get up? It's and not going to get, there? it's not going to get better. No. You're not going to get more fuel. Maybe after I'll like him. Tank. Maybe it's, I'll like him more. I just have to, I got to focus. You just know? Get, that's the other misconception. I think you probably agree with this what? is that people think marriage will fix something that is an ailment in the relationship. Yeah. Like or like a child. They do that to a children. He's Oof. kind of a dick, but if I marry him, yeah. then he'll be less of a dick. Or like, she's a pain in my ass. I'll marry her again. Yeah, I'll shut her up. If you've got a sore elbow on your way into the marriage, you yeah. have a sore elbow 10 years after. Might yeah, even be more worse. Sore. For sure. Might from get masturbating more sore. in front of sar- right. sharks. That's right. I almost said sarks. <laughs> yeah. That's from masturbating that's in front of sharks. That's from too much masturbating. You learn, you I've masturbated. You Learning I've, how to pronounce. <laughs> I've masturbated so much in front of sarks <laughs> that I don't even know how to talk. You lost your little bit from that. Uh, Laird, you're married to, uh, Elle Magazine's 1989, one of the five most beautiful people in the world. Yes. Gabby, how does that call? Do they just call you up and go, we would like you to be on this list of five? You sleep with the did you... photographer and, and then you get on that shoot and then, you know, they just put you in there. No, I, it's, you know, listen, they love to make lists, don't they? Yeah. You get on, I've been on bad lists. I just happen to get on well, a bad list. list. On. I don't know. I'm sure I've been on some bad lists. Oh, but you don't see, you haven't. I, I mean, well, you know but you know how that lists? is. Lists are like awards. It's usually for the people making yeah. them, not for the people getting them. Yeah. You know, it's like. Larry, I'm talking to Gabby now. I know. <laughs> really I wish you'd do it more. Uh, I have your book in the garage, your workout book. Yeah. Uh, oh, Force of Nature? Yeah. That's yeah, a good book. It is a good book. And yeah. I do that core workout. Uh, obviously, I've done it uh, not as much as I have, but I'm a lot leaner than I was in Gary. I'm married, like 12 pounds. That's from doing your workout. Is it your food or your exercise? What, what hammers you? The food, yeah. I had a lot of. KFC over on PCH up there. I used to hit that a lot. I used to run on the beach three miles on the sand and then go to KFC when I was done. <laughs> As your reward. <laughs> you just to negate the run. Just I guess. <laughs> but you can't outrun a bad diet. Is no, you can't. Mine. So just switch from like potatoes to lentils well, and you white can, rice to brown rice. But yeah. you have to go. You'd have to do well, more you'd, time than yeah. you could. You'd have to be doing the Tour de France. Yeah. Um, toe surfing. You, you've pro- How much money do you think you've left on the table, Laird? From not being sponsored. Like how many, you know what? That might be a better question for Gabby because you'll play it coy and be like, oh, I don't know, dude. It's not well, about the money for me. What would be a conservative estimate that he's told people to go kick rocks that have come and knocked on his door? Like we'll give you X amount of dollars. Just Laird Hamilton's sure. video game. Laird sure. Hamilton's this, that. Well, I don't think, first of all, I, I, I don't think Laird is opposed to, you know, he's had spon- you know, he's been with American Express. He's done certain sponsor type relationships. But like, let's say for example, a certain company comes to him that he authentically couldn't get behind, then cer- then he turns it down. And right now, in other now words, he's, I don't do anything. I don't. Yeah, I don't do anything but, yeah, with people I, that I don't believe in the product. Yeah, he just can't. First of all, as a very as a very but in the end, issue, which which leads to a lot of you never entered surf a lot of lack of you probably could have won every surf contest you but he, went into. But he certainly. But that's not necessarily true because that format isn't maybe set up for Laird's strengths. Laird's a bigger guy. He weighs more. A smaller wave going against a guy one forty five. He might you know do better. So I think. In a way, people can go, oh, Laird's such a purist, but there's also a side of it that's actually really smart because Laird then is by himself. And so big companies come and will pay him a, a, a very good living because they want to attach to that, to that cachet of Laird. If you're well, job, I don't like to be told what to do. That's why I don't like to participate. We're back to that. You see that? We started the interview with that. I'm just saying, I don't like that. to be told what to do. And that's why I don't like to participate in organized things. I don't want to go and have somebody blow a whistle and tell me to go out and run around in a circle for 30 minutes, and when I come in, they can tell me how I did. I- I'm just going to drive me out of my mind. How do you discern what's next for you? If your job is like you know, a three-story building-sized wave, what's next? Do you just wait for tsunamis and shit? <laughs> yeah. For the next well, level? what you do is you train. <laughs> yeah. in what order is to, something? But like, you, train, you, you train and you prepare yourself to be ready, and, and you don't know when. And so in a way, it's like this thing never, never ending. It's a lot like the fire department. Where you know you're gonna, it's gonna happen. But you want it to go next. One. You're a guy that wants next. You're a thrill seeker since you were a child. We've established yeah. that. You want next. You want higher. You want bigger. You, you but, created. But, but next is also created a sport. No, but next is also the next idea. So also too, it doesn't have to always That's necessarily. What I'm be, What's rattling around in your head where you're like, why hasn't anybody tried blank? Why hasn't anyone? Well, tried the foiling. Blank? Laird's really been focused for many years now on the foiling because it's efficient. And maybe could enable them to ride waves in a different way or even bigger ones. I don't know how the surfboard doesn't tip over when you do the 
when you foil the, when you do the foil chair on the board, it just doesn't seem structurally sound to me. But somehow you just scoot along <laughs> and fly and along. Chair surfboard that's a foot above a wave, like yeah. well, it's like hovercraft it's in like Star Wars. Like three feet above, right? Yeah. The thing is huge. And how much of it is under the water? Well, right, you you like want 10% the least of amount, the yeah. least amount of you want that thing right below the surface. It just seems like it should tip over. I know. Every time I see it, I think so too. Even though I've seen it a lot, it always kind of is mind boggling. Uh, here's a product I can get behind: U.S. storage. Do you have too much stuff, too many surfboards, <laughs> moldy old wetsuits. Well, with 20 years of storing expertise, state of the. 